The sewing machine sits silent now, draped in a sheet and gathering dust. It stands as a relic of a past life, a symbol of simpler times when the hum of the machine was the soundtrack to Valentina's days. Once, it was Valentina's livelihood, her nimble fingers coaxing delicate stitches into existence. Each piece of fabric she touched was transformed into something beautiful, a testament to her skill and dedication. Now, her hands grip something altogether different, the cold metallic frame of an anti-drone launcher. The precision and care she once applied to her sewing now channeled into a new, grim purpose. Valentina, a woman who once found solace in the quiet rhythm of needle and thread, is now a butcher witch, her life irrevocably altered by the war that has ravaged her homeland. The transformation from seamstress to soldier was not one she chose, but one that was thrust upon her by the cruel hand of fate. The term witch might conjure images of folklore and fantasy, but for Valentina and the women who stand beside her, it's a badge of honor, a testament to their grit and determination. These women have embraced the moniker, turning it into a symbol of their strength and resilience. They are the defenders of Buka, a town forever scarred by the atrocities of war, now rising from the ashes with a newfound spirit of resistance. The streets they once walked in peace are now battlegrounds, but they patrol them with unwavering resolve. Valentina, like many others, lost everything in the invasion. Her home, her business, her sense of security, all gone, swept away in the tide of violence. The life she knew was shattered, leaving behind only fragments of memories. Her home, her business, her sense of security, all gone, swept away in the tide of violence. The destruction was not just physical, but emotional, tearing apart the very fabric of her existence. But in the face of unimaginable loss, she found a wellspring of strength she never knew she possessed. The adversity she faced became the forge in which her new identity was shaped, a warrior born from the ashes of despair. The will to fight back, to protect what remained, to ensure that the horrors she witnessed would never be repeated. This newfound purpose gave her life a direction, a mission to safeguard her community. This is the story of the Butcher Witches, ordinary women transformed into warriors, their courage ignited by the fires of conflict. They are a testament to the power of the human spirit capable of rising to meet even the most daunting challenges. The air in Buka is thick with the ghosts of war. The memories of what was lost linger like the smoke that still hangs in the air, a constant reminder of the battles fought and the lives changed. But it is also alive with a spirit of defiance, a refusal to be cowed by fear. The women of Bucha stand as beacons of hope, their determination a light in the darkness. This spirit finds its embodiment in the women who have taken up arms, their determination a beacon of hope in a town struggling to heal. They strategize, train and support each other, forging bonds that are as strong as the steel they carry. Valentina, the seamstress turned drone hunter, is a symbol of this resilience. Her story, a testament to the indomitable spirit of the human heart, even in the darkest of times. Her journey from the quiet hum of a sewing machine to the harsh reality of warfare is a powerful reminder of the strength that lies within us all. The transition from seamstress to soldier is not an easy one. It requires not just a change in attire, but a complete transformation of mindset and skills. Valentina, along with dozens of other women from Buka, had to learn the intricacies of warfare. They had to adapt quickly, absorbing knowledge that would be crucial for their survival and effectiveness on the battlefield. 
They gathered in makeshift training grounds, the air humming with nervous energy. These grounds, often hastily set up in abandoned fields or repurposed buildings, became the crucibles where their transformation would take place. Their instructors, seasoned soldiers hardened by years of conflict, guided them through the technicalities of handling weapons, the strategies of drone detection, and the importance of coordinated action. These veterans shared not just their skills, but also their experiences, their stories of survival and resilience. Days were long and gruelling, filled with physical exertion and mental drills. The women pushed their bodies to the limit, running through obstacle courses, practicing hand-to-hand -hand combat and enduring the relentless drills that tested their endurance and resolve. The women learned to identify different types of drones, to anticipate their movements and to calibrate their launchers with precision. This training was crucial as drones had become a significant threat in modern warfare, capable of causing devastating damage. Each successful hit on a practice target was met with cheers, a testament to their growing proficiency and a boost to their confidence. These moments of success were vital, providing a much needed morale boost and reinforcing their belief in their capabilities. But beyond the technical skills, something profound was happening within the ranks of these women. They were not just becoming soldiers, they were becoming a cohesive unit, a sisterhood forged in the fires of adversity. They were forging a bond, a sisterhood tempered in the crucible of war. This bond was more than just camaraderie. It was a lifeline, a source of strength and support in the face of unimaginable challenges. Many of them, like Valentina, had lost loved ones, homes and livelihoods. These losses were a heavy burden, but they also served as a powerful motivator, driving them to fight not just for their own survival, but for the memory of those they had lost. They came from different backgrounds, ages and walks of life, but now, united by a common purpose, they found solace and strength in each other. This diversity became a source of strength as each woman brought her unique experiences and perspectives to the group. Laughter, often tinged with a hint of dark humour, became a coping mechanism, a way to momentarily push aside the horrors they had witnessed. These moments of levity were essential, providing a brief respite from the relentless pressure and fear. Stories were shared, tears were shed, and a profound sense of camaraderie blossomed. These shared experiences created a deep emotional connection, a bond that would sustain them through the darkest times. They were no longer just individuals thrust together by circumstance. They were a unit, a family, bound by the shared experience of loss, resilience, and the unwavering commitment to protect their town and their people. This unity gave them the strength to face the challenges ahead, knowing they were not alone in their fight. For many of the Bucha witches, the decision to take up arms wasn't just about defending their town. It was a profound act of reclaiming their lives and their sense of self. It was about confronting the trauma that haunted their waking hours, the nightmares that refused to fade the atrocities committed by Russian forces during the occupation of Bucha left deep scars on the collective psyche of the town, scars that were not easily healed. The women, many of whom had witnessed unspeakable horrors firsthand, were left grappling with a complex mix of grief, anger and fear. They had seen their homes destroyed, their loved ones taken and their peace shattered. The constant threat of drone attacks served as a relentless reminder of their vulnerability, of the ever-present danger that loomed over their heads. 
It was a stark reminder of the fragility of the peace they were trying to rebuild. A peace that seemed so elusive, yet so desperately needed. But within the ranks of the Bucha witches, something remarkable began to happen. The act of training, of preparing for combat, became a source of empowerment. The act of fighting back, of taking control and protecting their community, became a form of healing, a way to channel their pain into purpose and action. It was a way to transform their suffering into strength, to turn their fear into a weapon against their oppressors. The fear was still there, an ever-present shadow, but it was tempered by a steely resolve, a determination to not let 